Good morning, YouTube. This is Don V with Truth Be Told. And we have a few stories here uh, that we'd like to bring before you today and see what you think about it. Uh, I don't know about you, but yesterday uh, our internet went down here for uh, about an hour. It's kind of annoying, but hey, what do you do? Things happen. Well, apparently it was bigger than I thought. So hold on a second and we'll just go ahead and move right into these stories. Internet outage shuts down websites, apps worldwide. Fastly also supports such sites as New York Times, Hulu, and Reddit. Websites and apps around the world, including CNN, HBO Max, and Spotify, went down Tuesday after the major content delivery network Fastly had a widespread failure. Fastly also supports such sites as the New York Times, Hulu, and Reddit, according to CNN. Other major internet platforms and sites, including Amazon, Target, and the UK government website gov.uk also were impacted. The problem is related to an outage at Fastly's cloud service provider. The problem was fixed about 7 a.m. Eastern Time, but the internet user afterward were still reporting some problems getting on the sites. Yeah, no kidding. I think it was, yeah, 10 11 when we had our problems, so that explains that. Moving on to the next story. Hackers expose 8.4 billion passwords and post them online in possible largest dump of passwords ever. Hackers released data on 8.4 billion passwords this week and posted the infamous information online. This might be the largest dump of passwords ever. Just what we all need, isn't it? Surprisingly, this is not making many headlines in the mainstream media. BGR and MSN reported shortly before Apple's CEO Tim Cook took the virtual stage of iPhone Maker's Apple Park headquarters campus for WWDC 2021 on Monday, at which the company unveiled a ton of new software updates, including some major new privacy enhan enhancements. An email landed in my inbox underscoring how critical those privacy features are going to be once they roll out with iOS 15. Basically, there's been another huge data leak this time exposing several billion passwords in what might be the biggest dump of passwords online ever. This news comes via the team of Cyber News, which reports that a 100 gigabytes uh, text file containing a staggering 8.4 billion passwords entries was just leaked on a popular hacker forum. This data set presumably combines passwords stolen via precious data breaches and leaks. It has been dubbed the Rock U 2020 password leak on that hacker forum. That name was apparently chosen per Cyber News as a nod to Rocky data breach from back in 2009 when threat actors hacked their way into social app website servers and got their hands on more than 32 million user passwords stored in plain text. If you're reading these words, suffice it to say you probably need to change your passwords today. Even that's because the new password leak is comparable in scale to the so-called compilation of many breaches, or comb, that we wrote about earlier this year. The previous compilation was essentially a giant database of, of more than 3.2 billion email and password pairings based on existing data that have been stolen as part of previous be breaches and leaks from companies like Netflix and Link. The new Link password database, of course, is more than double that previous collection. And when you stop and consider that there are more than 7 billion people in the world, this means that there's a strong likelihood that one of your myriad passwords is very likely caught up in this leak. CyberNews is re recommending that anyone who wants to check and see if their passwords are included in the database should visit the CyberNews Pass Personal Data Leak Checker or the Leak Password Checker, where a password entities from Rock Q 2021 compilation are being uploaded. By combining the 8.4 billion unique password variations with other breach compilations that include username and email addresses, threat actors can use Rock Q 2021 to collect to mount password dictionary and password spraying attacks against untold numbers of online attacks of cyber news notes. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, moving on to the next story. Exclusive. China's BioWare bio warfare program involved in the origin of COVID-19 is linked to its military, yet its access, knowledge, skills, and fundings from the U.S. Nice. 
China's Bioware uh, Bio Warfare program has three levels. There is a core secret military level consisting of military research centers and hospitals. The core layer is supervised by Academy of Military and Medical Sciences in coordination with so-called civilian entities, such as the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences and the Chinese Centers for Disease Control. Later on top of the core level of are China's universities, civilian research institutions, and medical companies. Everyone should understand that in China there's no difference between the military and civilian research. Really? The fusion of those research and development sectors was mandated, mandated by the 2016 Chinese Communist Party's 13 five-year plan. And that middle layer, which has allowed China to access uh, international knowledge, skills, and funding, particularly from the U.S., all of which has contributed to the advancement of China's virus research, including bioweapons development. In April 2021, Gatewood Pundit article, we highlighted the important contributions of veterinary and agricultural scientists to China's bioware warfare program. Here, we document connections within that core military level, how it links to the middle layer of China's universities and research institutes, and how that middle layer establishes research collaboration with U.S.-based scientists to access U.S. knowledge, skills, and research funding, which has benefited China's bioware warfare program. As stated in our May 14, 2021 Gateway Pundit article, the Military Veterinary Research Institute and Institute of Zoonic Disease at Chechengjin Province of China, led by People's Liberation Army, General Nengi Jin and retired uh, General Zhan Zhu Zi, are core military elements of China's biowarfare program. The military's Veterinary Research Institute and the Institute of Zoonic Diseases at Chechen directly coordinate with the Academy of Military Medical Sciences in Beijing. It acts as a clearinghouse and a manager of military-related activities in China's universities and civilian research centers. It has also led a virus collection program as well as conducting its own research, especially in regard to mammalian and non-human primate experiments on viruses and vaccines. As described in our May 18th Gateway Pundit article, at least four subordinates of Zhang Zhu Zi and uh, Nig Yi Jin have been engaged in a massive domestic and international virus collection effort for over eight years, namely Bao He, Quan Su Fan, Cheng Cheng Tu, and Zik, Zik Wang Wu. Whew, well, that's a mouthful. Bao He, together with Cheng Jun Wang of the People's Liberation Army, Eastern Theater Command, and Nanjing played key roles in the isolation of bat coronaviruses ZC45 and ZXC21, claimed by the Chinese whistleblower of Dr. Li Meng Yan to be the viral backbone for COVID 19. We have a document here. We believe that the Military v Veterinary Research Institute and the Institute of Zoonic Disease in Chang Chun were deeply involved in the research that led to the creation of COVID-19. following image shows how China's core military bio-warfare level connects to the middle layer of Chinese universities and the civilian research institutes which are being managed by Military Veterinary Research Institute and the Institute of Zoonic Disease in Chang Chun. Okay, let's see, we've got a good list here. I'll leave this up here just for a second here. All right. And you might want to pause it to read all those names if you're interested. Colonel Zhe Ying Bai of the People's Liberation Army is the key link connecting the military's Veterinary Research Institute and the Institute of Zoonic Disease in Changchang, the military Academy of Military Medical Sciences and its Laboratory Animal Centers in Beijing, and the People's Liberation Army Eastern Theater Command in Beijing, the source of bat coronaviruses ZX45 and ZX21. And there's the young man right there. Colonel Bai has listed his professional locations at Jiangjing Medical Laboratory Animal Institute and the Laboratory of Animal Center of Academy of Military Medical Sciences in Beijing. We believe they're the same entity with the newer facility having been constructed in February of 2020. 
Both the older animal research facility in location one and the newer facility in location two are within the same complex as the Institute of Microbiology of Academy of Milita Military Medical Sciences and the People's Liberation Army Hospital, number 307. There you go. Take a look at these. And they were pointed out. The final layer of China's bioware Biowarfare program is the link to the U.S. virus research programs. Most often, those connections are established from the middle layer of Chinese universities and research institutes, but occasionally there are direct connections. One such, such direct connection is Professor Pai Yang Shi of the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, Texas, funded by Dr. Anthony Fauci. Anthony Fauci, imagine that. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Pai Young Shi, who has also been an honorary professor, honorary professor at the Wuhan Institute of Virology since 2007, has conducted collaborative research including gain of function. There it is. And patients with Ching, Ching Feng Quinn from the Academy of Mi Military and Medical Sciences. Hulai Wang from the Military Veterinary Research Institute, Chang Chung, and the Wuhan Inst Institute of Virology. It is time to end the debate about the origin of COVID, which China hopes to prolong. COVID was made in a laboratory in China. The next task is to identify those in People's Liberation Army who were involved in creating the virus and precisely how it was done. In conjunction, there should be investigation of U.S.-based scientists who may have assisted the People's Liberation Army and exposed the extent of infiltration of U.S. virus research programs by the Chinese Communist Party and the People's Liberation Army. Lawrence Stillman, Ph.D., was retired from an inter international career in business and medical research with 29 years of service in the U.S. military reserve and a veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq. Is, uh, da, 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 I don't know why I read that. At any rate... Let's go on to the next one here. It says China is paying U.S. mainstream media outlets to promote chipcom propaganda. To no one's surprise, China has been paying U.S. mainstream media outlets to publish chipcom propaganda. Infowars reported last week that China was is paying U.S. companies to push their chipcom propaganda through China Daily. China Daily, a Chinese state-run media outlet, is currently paying multiple U.S. news agencies millions of dollars to publish Chikong propaganda. According to the Justice Department documents, Time Magazine, the Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tribute, and the Foreign Policy Magazine are all currently receiving money from the Chinese outlet. For example, as part of $700,000 advertising paid by China Daily, Time published 75 online articles from the out, outlet in this the past year. The lucrative deal resulted in Time posting content promoting a Chinese drone maker that provided products to surveil uh, Uyghurs being held captive in article promoting China's five-year plan and several other pro-Chinese Chinese pieces. However, unlike the Wall Street Journal, who once took money from China Daily, Time Magazine failed to disclose the fact that the outlet is funded by the Chinese government. In the past six months, China Daily increased its advertising spending by over $1 million. Below is the DOJ document related to China's payment to the U.S. media outlets. And you see it there. We've observed over the past few years how American media has pushed chick on propaganda. A year ago, we reported how U.S. media was pushing the narrative that COVID came from a wet market. This was important to China. If COVID was an event that happened naturally, then China would claim they, they were a victim too. If created in a lab, then China is liable for millions in damages. Interesting, interesting. Okay, I'm just going to click on this and uh, it says... Uh, at any rate, that's about all we have for today. Uh, thank you for stopping by and, and listening for what we have to say here. And uh, come by again. Be sure to subscribe and be sure to thumbs up for me if you would. And this is Don V broadcasting out of beautiful Arizona, where I think we're going to be like 87 today. 
uh, under sunny skies. And that's about all we got to say for, uh, for this report. Look for another one later on this afternoon. And we are out of here.